Let's go on from here to the torus, to mm -hmm. your idea of the torus, because we're talking about circularity, and the torus mm -hmm. is obviously involved with circles. Let me get this torus that we have. It's right over here. <coughs> but besides just talking about this torus, let's talk about toruses in general and how they, uh, how they occur in nature. Right, let and me put this away, it's rather distracting. Okay. <coughs> How would you have something? As opposed to uh, nothing? As opposed to nothing, shall we say. Or suppose you have a lot of neither nothing nor something, a sort of <laughs> <laughs> mixture. How do you get something in the middle of this uh, X, this neither something nor nothing. You mean how, how do you isolate things? That, that's, that's it. Uh, I don't want to punish you, but I'm just posing the, a question that is a very fundamental one. Well, you separate it from other things. No, but there aren't any <laughs> things. How do you get the first thingness? I don't know. I don't see you that. You really don't know. <laughs> well, I don't see that exactly as my problem. <laughs> it's not your problem. Well, I'm faced with I'm faced with so many things. I'm trying to get fewer things. Well, we're talking about cosmology, and that is uh, a problem of beginnings. So, how do you get something to start off? I mean, how would God get something? Yes. Well, I can see it in terms of generation of dimensions. But that's only because I Genera think generation of dimensions, and when you have, and you can't get separateness until you have two dimensions, and then you well, you still have to put some substance or something in the dimensions. I mean, the dimensions are just a matrix. Okay, so you have a plane, and you still want to put something on the plane. <laughs> well, I thought you'd uh, say, well, you you take some of this mucky murk or whatever this nondescript stuff and pack it together, then you would have something. Okay. But if you did that, it would dissipate again. This is, you can't get smoke and put it in a bowl and then let it float around. Uh, even if there were, all the air was full of smoke so that you could pack this, it would dissipate. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, there is a way you can get something in the middle of something, the same kind of something, as something made out of smoke in smoke, okay. something made out of air in air, something made out of water in water. And this is the vortex or the torus the, or the hurricane. A hurricane is a whirling of air in air and it has an identity and you damn well know it because when the eye of the hurricane crosses you, the houses go up and fly around. Mm -hmm. uh, tornado. Tornado, especially. Yeah. But you know what the word hurricane means? No. It's an it's a Aztec word. The god with one leg. Hmm. And of course that one leg is that ferocious thing the at the center, the right. vortex at the center. But it's a toroidal expression in air. The air is coming in at the bottom, I believe, and whirling around and this tight column and then going out again and coming back and whirling around and out again. Mm -hmm. So the torus is the only way you can get uh, an identifiable something in the middle of itself. Okay. It's, it's co-substantial with its surround. It's made of the same s stuff as its surroundings. Mm -hmm. If you were to say, well, I could have a brick in the middle of a vacuum, that's not fair because you're not making the brick out of, out of the background material. Okay. Now, uh, it also has the property of being self-sustaining. Uh, remember that I said you push the smoke together, it would dissipate. 
the, the smoke ring or the vortex can sustain itself. It, it containing energy, and this energy might dissipate over time, but it sustains itself quite a long time. Does it always dissipate over time? Did, tortoises seem to have lifetimes, or vortices, vortices do. Well, that's due to friction. They, they'll ultimately uh, go, but we don't have to bother with friction at the beginning of things, because friction means different things are okay. there uh, conflicting with one another. Okay, now, uh, so much for fundamental reasons for the Taurus, but there are also empirical reasons in that all, say, magnetic fields, even if uh, electricity is just th flowing through a wire, it's making a toroidal shape. See, the wire can't just go from here to there. It has to come back. And between going out and coming back, it makes a loop, and in that loop you'll get a torus forming. Mm -hmm. And it can be so strong uh, that the wires carrying a heavy current have to be strongly braced so they don't either fly apart or come together. You can get uh, mm -hmm. disastrous short circuits that way with a very heavy current. Right. So there's a magnetic field. Is also a toroidal. Is also a torus. Uh, now the next step is to go into the mathematics. The mathematics of the torus introduces a different topology. Topology is the science of surfaces. Now the normal surface, like the plane of the paper, if I make a, if I make a, a circle, and if I were to cut that out, then I could separate this little dish of paper from the rest of it, right. and that would be no longer connected to the paper from which it was cut. Mm -hmm. But if I do the same thing with a torus, which I'll represent as a sort of donut-shaped thing, with a hole there. Mm -hmm. And let's say this point X, if I put the circle around in such a way that I include the hole, I can then separate, take this all away, and say this X is separated from all these Y's out here, <laughs> all this other stuff. Right. But you forget that you can get from, you can get back to X from the outside by going up through the hole, mm -hmm. going in that circle. Right. And uh, that means that with the toroidal topology, you have a chance, you have the opportunity to describe separateness that isn't complete, or I call it pseudo separation. In other words, you're different from me. Right. We're two different entities in a universe. But how you could ask, how could the universe create things separate from itself? Well, it does it by this umbil we're all we're connected with this umbilical cord. Like you would be I would be X and you would be uh, Z, say, because I used up Y. <laughs> Uh, we could each have this circle <laughs> and and be ostensibly separate but connected through the hole. Now what's what's the hole? <laughs> I mean I know it's just a metaphor. Well the hole is the undifferentiated primal fire. The unity of all things. I don't know whether you want another picture but I can I think I... Uh, so it's both a whole H-O-L-E and a whole W-H-O-L-E. Right. Uh, well, you could even talk about the black hole when everything comes together and is re reunited. But I think the black hole is, 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 too, is too hypothetical. It's a nice thing to hold in imagination. I would rather talk about the hole in the sense of uh, that from which matter is is separated out. Um, am I being too f f 
too stretchy, too far out? No, I, I like it far out. If, if you think of purpose as primary, and then in order to get going, it has to cut pieces off itself to, to use. Uh, those pieces, one of them being matter, another being relationship, and so on. It, it, these differentiations from totality necessary to have a game to play with. Maybe you'll cut it out, but I'll tell you a horrible story. <laughs> uh, one of my machinists at Bell, Ollie Schreiner, was a fascinating person. He'd been a prison warden for 20 years, and he came to me with these elaborate drawings of helicopters. And I said, how did you ever... Well, they were obviously not done by someone who was a draftsman, or they were done by some complete outsider, amateur. I said, how, how, how did you draw these drawings, or why did you draw these drawings? Sort mm -hmm. of like Shakespeare Bacon question. <laughs> And he said, well, I was a prison warden for 20 years, and I used to think of how could I escape from prison. <laughs> well, anyway, he turned out to be a very imaginative person. He could read lips, for one thing. He used to uh, watch from 50 feet away the girls going into the ladies' room, read their lips, and then confront them with what they'd said <laughs> later. <laughs> well, now, why did I bring up Ollie? Well, I think oh, he told me about one of his prisoners, that he found this prisoner had cut open his stomach and removed his intestines and was cutting them up into letters, which he was making into a sort of crossword puzzle or something on the table. <laughs> of course, he died before the 24 hours were out. But uh, that's what the universe is doing. It's, it cuts up its wholeness to make these pieces to play games with. At <laughs> any rate, when you go back into the H-O-L-E, you restore the W-H-O-L-E. That's the neck of the torus. It all comes back together. 